extra, extra, read all about it. Google and Yahoo have recently announced that if you don't follow our new email sender guidelines, we're not gonna deliver your message. Starting on February 24th. All right, so yes, it is true. Google will not deliver your messages or Yahoo to their inboxes unless you meet their new email sender guidelines. But but you wanna make sure that your emails get delivered, right? I agree with you. Let's look at it. So if you send more than 5,000 emails a day to Google or Yahoo accounts, then you need to make sure that you're gonna stick around and watch this whole video because there's a whole lot of things that we're gonna look at. However, if you send less than 5,000 emails per day, to Yahoo or Google accounts, then I'm gonna make sure there's still a few things you wanna watch out for, but I will let you know in the video as we get there when you can just hop off. Cause I don't need, you don't need to stick around for the really technical stuff, but there are a few things that everybody does need to know about these new email sender guidelines that start on February 24th. All right, as we jump in, my name is Josiah and I am a consultant at Next Tech Consultants. We help small businesses stop stressing about their tech and focus on their businesses. If you're having any issues with setting up any of these things in this video or any of the videos that I link, feel free to reach out to us at support at nexttechconsultants.com. You can also find us on all the social media platforms at Next Tech NT. If you're sending less than 5,000 emails a day, then you need to make sure you have SPF and DKIM records set up. For most businesses, these are the main things that need to be done to meet this new requirement. First off, an SPF record is sender policy framework. What that does is tells the world through a DNS record what servers are allowed to send your email from your domain. So it's a text record typically, and it goes into your DNS records and it looks like V equals SBF colon include, and it has some IP addresses and domains that are allowed to send. I have a whole video that goes over that and it's linked in the description below, but it talks all about how to put in SBF record and which ones you should put in. The other thing that you need to make sure you pay attention to is DKIM which DKIM record stands for Domain Key Identified Mail. That, what that does is it puts a key in the header of your message that everybody can see, and when it gets sent out, that key then looks at your DNS records and says, oh, where do I check to get the response and the answer to my key? So then it checks and says, oh yeah, that's a valid key, and then it comes back and tells the receiving email provider that yes, this meets DKIM requirements. And this was another way for them to check to make sure that your email was sent from you and not someone trying to spoof you. So those are the two main things that you need to know about sending your emails. However, for everybody, you should also know that you need to keep up with our FC 5322 internet, internet message, message formatting. formatting. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, if you ever want to fall asleep at night and you can't, you should probably read this. We're going to let it scroll through the screen for a second while I'm talking. And it's a nightmare. So if you're ever tired or not tired and want to fall asleep, Go ahead and check that out. But essentially what you need to know is that Google or Microsoft, your email provider, handles most of this with their message headers and how they kind of attack that and set up SPF and DKIM and all of that. It's all in the headers and your email providers handle that. But as an end user sending email, there's a couple important things. You wanna make sure one, it's actually you writing the message. And if you do use ChatGPT to compose your message, which is great, and I think you should, but just make sure you change a little bit so it's not an automatic generated message because those are more likely to be picked up by spam filters. Also, make sure you have HTTPS links in your email instead of HTTP links. I had somebody putting their logo in their email and it was HTTP to their logo, not a secure link, and it sent all of their email messages spams. Once we remove that, their email message went to people's inbox. So for everybody, you need to make sure that you have SPF, DKIM, write the email, 
Don't let a bot do it. Just or just make some changes so they know it's you. And then make sure you have HTTPS links. Finally, the last thing that is this is required for people that send 5,000 more messages a day, but is a good idea even if you send less than 5,000 messages per day. You want to have a DMARC record. What DMARC does is, and this is kind of confusing because there's a lot of records in here. You have SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. DMARC says, I'm going to check what your SPF and DKIM records are. And they're going to go back and say, does it pass or does it fail? If it fails, then it's blocked and it goes to spam. If it passes, it goes in. Email providers are liking to see a DMARC record on your email passing. So it goes more likely to the inbox. And so all of these things add up and give you a better score on your email. I do have a whole video explaining this. Again, a link in the description for SPF, DKIM, DMARC, all of that. But essentially what you wanna do is you wanna look for a provider like DMarcian to set up your DMARC record or help you put it in. And you can also have them monitor and you can see reports from them. As an MSP, we could also help you with this. It typically starts at about $29 a month. Um, and that includes the software. So make sure you set up a free initial consultation on our website, uh, link to that in the description, and you can go over there, set up an initial consultation, and we'll help you get this all set up. Finally, this is the point that if you send less than 5,000 messages a day to Google or Yahoo, feel free to leave. We're going to get a little more technical now. All right. So now that I have the technical people here, uh, if you send 5,000 or more messages per day, to Google or Yahoo and you're doing distributions lists, we're gonna go through five things very quickly of what you need to make sure you have based on this new policy framework. So just like everybody else, SPF, DKM, those have to be in there, 100%. Check out the videos if you don't know how to do it, make sure that's there. DMARC for you is absolutely required. Like you have to have a DMARC record. The cool thing is they're not saying that you have to have a DMARC record reject or uh, quarantine. You just have to have a DMARC record in there. The policy could be none. And if you don't know what that means, again, like I talked about earlier, check out the video in the description below so you can see that. All right, number three, if you are sending email from a domain, you're not Google, you're not Microsoft, you are have an email server, and you're managing these emails, make sure your pointer records are accurate. Google and Microsoft send from so many messages, they've done stuff to make sure and they've confirmed their pointer records. But what you need to do is that you need to have either what's called reverse DNS that takes your IP address and goes back to your domain name. So if you're sending email from your domain or your place is the one sending the records, you need to make sure you have the proper pointer records in your DNS so that people can confirm that your IP sends you back to your domain. All right, number four that we're gonna talk about is ARC. It's authenticated received chain and their headers that you put in your email. So if you're an email provider, this was implemented in 2016 to help keep messages secure. The problem was when people would forward a message or use a third party service that would edit the message, there was no way to keep their DMARC records intact as they went down the chain. So I have a whole video explaining this, link in the description below, but what you need to make sure you do, if you are an email server and you're providing emails to be sent out to meet this new requirement, you need to make sure you have your ARC headers in place and check out the new video. I'll also link the uh, article that explains what you need to do for ARC as well. But basically you need to have three headers. You need to have an ARC seal, ARC message signature, and ARC authentication results. So that deals with ARC. If you have more questions, put them in the comments below or check out the video. I'm happy to help you with that. Finally, the last thing that you need to do, if you're sending 5,000 or more messages a day to Google or Yahoo, you have to have an unsubscribe link. Not a hidden, like it can be hidden a little bit, but it needs to be easy. It's, they specify an easy unsubscribe link. That means your emails have to have something at the bottom that allow your recipients to unsubscribe from your mail. 
This also becomes really important with what I just talked about. Number four was arc headers, because if you have a third party distribution list that sends out your emails and they're the ones that put the unsubscribe link in, you don't you need to make sure that third party company has arc headers and allows you to still send it and pass DMARC policy. This will be a big one if you're using a outdated third party distribution list provider you're gonna to wanna to research and find out who you can use so your DMARC policy doesn't fail as it gets sent out to your list. So that's kind of those four and five go together. Um, but those are the five things that you need to make sure you have in place if you're sending 5,000 or more messages per day to Google or Yahoo. And if you're still around here, please do like and subscribe to this channel as it really does help me create more content like this to support your business. I thank you guys for sticking around. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.